Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two. It looks like we have sound. This is a journey. <laughs> it's the journey that's important. Not the destination. Not the destination, not at all. So, American Indians were freaked out. Hello. <laughs> Right. Would help if I put the car actually into gear. Right. American Indians were freaked out when white men white men, white men took pictures or photographs of them. The Original photographs were well. They're, they're attributed as a as a French invention. I think before they were known as the photograph. They were known as the daguerreotype. Louis Daguerre, I believe, was the inventor. And it was a pretty amazing scientific step for humanity, the ability to be able to visually record the world around about us. <laughs> it, also puts, it also put a lot of painters out of business. I think that you could probably attribute the invention of the the camera to to what to what then be in the artistic circles became impressionism because there was no need to try to capture the realism of a person through painting it was still an art but there was no need for it the the new technology made the old systems redundant very quickly. The same way that you know, the car eventually made the horse pretty redundant. The, uh, the invention of the camera and the ability to capture an image, image mag magic, the ability to to capture the image propelled art into emotional abstractions. What then became known as Impressionism, <laughs> then driven into a kind of narcissistic schizophrenia in the form of cubism, a curiosity in the presence of surrealism. Um, but that's not what I what I want to get into. Although the the madness of Boing, boing, boing as the car bounces down the road. The madness of of humanity can be seen in the acceptance of certain types of art as acceptable and normal, when in fact they are completely insane. The post-cubist 
the juxtaposition of uh, triangles and squares. Not that that not that it wasn't visually interesting. You know the work of Kandinsky is aesthetically please, pleasing. Um, same with some of the work of Brack and uh, there's a there's a flow in the stylism of Jackson Pollock but but anyway don't really want to uh, discuss that area of art that's a strange word isn't it art very short word anyway the Indians believed how quickly we digress, don't we? The Indians believed that that when someone took their their picture that it was in some way stealing their soul. I think what they were trying to express was that that in the photograph the soul is absent from from the from the picture i suppose that that the photograph is essentially just one dimensional It it has no heart that that beats. Again, it can capture the aesthetic nature of the world around about us. But this idea that you could steal from someone their very essence by making a copy of them. is very powerful. So powerful, in fact, that it might even be true the the magic of the image is something eternal it's something that that we hold above other things in the world Perhaps that's why in the original Christian writings, and I know that people still fight over this, but that doesn't bother me, uh, that, that there, there are warnings about false idols that would be presented to people. For them to follow. And one of one of the many teachings of of Jesus. Now I'm not all knowing on this subject, so give me a little bit of space, but uh, I think that he was teaching that the only path to God was through him. And he was trying to raise awareness in people of how easily, oh my God, that was close. That looked like a black 
cat that ran out in front of the car there. And I have no idea how I didn't hit it. There's no other cars on this stretch of road. Why couldn't the cat wait until the car passed and then run across the road? What's wrong with these animals? <laughs> he said, staring at society, what's wrong with these animals? Hmm. As they lock heads and chase balls and slap each other with high fives. Anyway, throughout history there has been this manipulation of true nature through the creation of idols that, that we should follow. First it was done through the artistry of of, of sculpture where the deities or the gods or, or, or whatever were were sculpted to be larger than life and the And then these these mediums were well, were supported by the fairy tales and stories of the cultures of the times given out by by oracles. who were the quiet social movers, shakers, and manipulators. The imagery of the, the statue couldn't really be replaced by the, uh, by the paintings, because the statues were bigger and more solid and more foreboding, I think that's the word. Kind of frightening for people. And whoever had the whoever had the uh the bigger god <laughs> had more power, right? Like whoever has the bigger car, or the bigger house, or the bigger garden, or the bigger office, or the bigger office block, or the bigger building, or the bigger tower, or the bigger skyscraper, or the whatever. <laughs> whatever. <sighs> we know you're compensating for something. Anyway, maybe you're not. Each man is an island unto himself. Few truly get close to the real person the soul. Anyway, that's what I wanted to uh, discuss. The, the way that it was believed that these pictures of people were manipulations of reality. That people would focus more on the picture and the image than on what was real because it was easier. It's always easier to focus on that which is not real because you don't have to do anything about it. Because you can't do anything about it because it's not real. 
<laughs> so many people will spend so much time holding on to that which is not real because no one can take it away from them because it's not real the Indians in many ways were a very connected people I'm not saying that they were the uh, I'm not saying that their culture was <laughs> ideal <laughs> uh, just a short look through history will find many elements uh, <laughs> far from romantic the way they treated their children was was often brutal anyway they understood the need for connection connection to the earth and one of the repeating themes that you'll hear from me is that most words have roots far deeper than we realize one of these words is the word soul it has of course on one hand the meaning of part of the human spirit which is intangible is that a good explanation? I don't know, I think we would all probably define the human soul as something different something that is highly precious and that people don't take enough care over something that can definitely be eroded and corroded especially by money Anyway, at the beginning, I think that each soul is is an example of beautiful and limitless potential that exists in humanity. And is a treasure to to be protected at all costs the other use of soul is of course the bottom of the human foot the part that connects us to the earth and, and with the world this is the part that allows the, the energy of the earth to flow in and out of our body. And as much as that might have been a theory in the past, there is now enough scientific evidence, and <laughs> evidence just being things that we can see, <laughs> and through machines that we've created to show that if we repeat the same action, we get the same result there appears to be a constant flow back and forth through the human body which, which is why um, a lot of a uh, lot of alternative health experts and doctors recommend 
cleaning the human psyche by walking barefoot by getting back in contact with with the earth apparently this allows different ions to flow in and out of the body having a a connecting and cleansing effect and it's there in the language we tend to think of because our because our we tend to think because our our brains are psychologically wired that way that, that the soul is somewhere in the the upper part of the body perhaps part of the heart perhaps part of the the brain or perhaps part of the mind or or, or uh, or belonging there but it's as if the language knows that it's not there the language is telling us that the soul is the part of us that connects us with the universe and that if we are not careful the imagery that surrounds us can cause us to lose our soul perhaps even steal our soul and what a thing it is to lose that we can't lose that we can't afford to lose that we can't afford to have the image take away the deeper part of ourselves pictures eventually as technology progressed and allowed and, and became cheaper and allowed for more images to be created the uh, the single image became the moving image the classic example being a little flip book with a stick figure in the corner where you flick the pages and the, the figure appears to do something but this movement became known as animation and this animated motion also refers to the human soul there's an etymological connection between the cinema the anime and that which makes us us <laughs> as I wrote a long time ago <laughs> and I will repeat constantly it's a movie to move me to make me think yes it can exist purely as art but then art itself has little meaning without connection with a viewer or audience and so as the single image of magic the picture 
encapsulate something which is not truly us. Perhaps it even steals from us as we focus on that which is already fading away. Oh, it's nice to capture moments. Don't get me wrong, it helps with our memories. Or does it? There is a question. So be aware of the things that move you, the emotions that motion to change. Be aware of the images around you. Take note and understand. That's my thought. Let me know what you think. <laughs>